Okay guys, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ba'd. So we are at verse number 59 of Surah Al-Qasas. So let's get right into it because we've got a lot of things to cover today. Insha'Allah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and he tells us, وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ مُهْلِكَ الْقُرَىٰ it is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he destroys a nation. Until Allah sends fi ummiha in the main city of that place or that country or that town. Now why is that important? Because if you can convince, so if a prophet or a messenger is sent to the main city of that place and can start a, a program, or start their their da'wah and start you know teaching and changing the narrative and changing the perception that people had of who Allah is and who they should worship. If they can get to the heart, then inshaAllah all of the other villages and communities that surround the main city, then inshaAllah ta'ala the influence could be a little easier. You know, it's just like when you're talking to a whole community, you start off with the tribal leader, you start off with the leader of the caste, and if you can convince him or her, then usually the followers fall into place as well. So Allah says He will send messengers until He does this, fi ummiha rasulay, that they could recite upon them His ayat. وَمَا كُنَّا مُهْلِكِ الْقُرَىٰ إِلَّا وَأَ and we will have never destroyed any nation except that amongst them the people were people who were wrongdoers. We never gave them anything except that they were given or they had mata'ul hayati dunya wa zinatuha. You know what mata' is? Mata' is uh, something that's important to you but you don't depend on it. So it could be as something as simple as like a pen or a book or a pencil or a fork or a spoon. Like these things are useful to you. They're important to have. But you're not going to your life's not going to end because you don't have a fork. You know? So that's what mata'ul hayati dunya. So Allah says that we have given you everything in this world, but all of it is just mata'. Everything came with an exp an expiration date. And it looked beautiful to you. Allah decorated it for you. But everything just, it dies out. It ends. It starts to corrode. It starts to rot away. It eventually disintegrates. It eventually disappears. Nothing on this planet lasted forever. Even the planet itself is starting to deteriorate. You know, this is why some climatologists, some scientists even say that one of the reasons that we see this whole massive change in, in, in the climate around the globe, you know, some places gets hotter, some places gets colder, some places in between. The point is this whole phenomenon of climate change is as a result of the earth itself is dying. All of its resources, everything, time is eventually killing this planet. And it's inevitable. It will come to an end. So Allah is reminding all of us, everything I gave you, it's matar. You might think it's important. You might think, man, I really need this. Man, this is really important to me. And you might think that, you know, it looks beautiful. There's, they, there can't be anything more perfect than this. And Allah says that it's just something that's matar. It comes with an expiration. It, it's going to disappear. وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ this is, uh, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's response to that is. You know, it's kind of depressing when you hear that everything that you have and you live for and you struggle for, Allah just says it's nothing, it's just mata'. But then Allah says what is with Allah is even better, khair. What's with Allah is so much better. Wa abqa, And it lasts way longer. You know, you might think for a moment, especially in marriages, right? You'll have one day where you and your, your husband or your wife, right? You're just having a great day. Everything is just perfect. You know, when you're eating, you're just having great conversations. When you go out, it's just so pleasant. And you're thinking to yourself, why can't every day be like this? Until in just literally in a split moment, something triggers a problem, tension starts to arise, or something happens and all of that pleasantness just, boom, it's gone. What Allah is telling us here is that 
everything that connects you and keeps you close to him is always better and it's more permanent. So how do you link the two scenarios together? Those moments where are difficult, those tough times in marriage, when you keep Allah close even during those tough times, then even those tough times become healthy moments for the marriage. You start to see the wisdom why you had those moments in the marriage, why the arguments came about. You start to see and you start to appreciate, you start saying to yourself, man, subhanAllah, you know, that argument, I learned a lot about you and you learned a lot about me. And we've got to change. We've got to do things differently. That's not us. So you start to realize that what you thought was terrible, because you had that consciousness of Allah, like you kept Allah in your mind during that whole period, Allah gives you a journey because you're close to Him. Allah gives you that journey and it still becomes healthy and fruitful in its own way. You know, psychologists make us pay thousands of dollars to hear this stuff. And Allah put it in this Quran and just told you straight up, look, anything that's near me is better for you and it's permanent. Meaning the next time you have those tough moments in your marriage and, the, and you, you keep using the same formula, guess what's going to happen? It's always going to be the same result. You'll always know how to handle those difficult times in the best way possible. You'll, know, you'll even know when to step back. You're like, I don't want to get into this argument right now. I don't want to get into this problem. You know, you'll know how to just pull back. You'll know how to control your tongue. You'll know how to just do the things you're supposed to do. Do the things that experts and psychologists tell you. You sit there, and you, ex you unload your problems and they tell you, okay, well, you need to keep yourself under control. Go take a walk, go do this, go do that. All Allah had to say was, well, وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ وَأَبَقَى Everything that is with Allah is better for you and it's permanent. Just keep Allah in your life and you'll see how things just... Everything just works out. Everything just becomes smoother and better. Afala taqilun. Look what Allah asks us. Don't you think about this thing? Like, don't you just take a moment and reflect on that? Like, just think about it. Has anybody ever lost or become miserable when they didn't, when, when they had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their life? Has anybody lived a miserable life? It's never happened. So why don't you think about that stuff? Allah continues. This is where I got the title of this video, guys, this ayah. Didn't we promise to them a beautiful promise? Wa'dan hasana, a beautiful promise. And then they met that promise. They met, they came, they confronted the promise that Allah made. So what was the promise? Everything that Allah promised in terms of reward. Blessing, Barakah, Jannah, and all of its blessings in paradise. So you know what happens to the believer here? What Allah says is that there come a time where you're going to be in front of me, you're going to be front of Jannah, and you're going to look around, and you're going to be like, oh my God, there's the fruits that Allah talked about in the Quran. وَفَوَاكِهُ kathira. In it, it's going to have so many fruits. And it's not just any fruit. When you take one of, a bite out of these fruits of Jannah, fawakiha comes from the word fakiha. Fakiha means when you bite into it, it feels good all over. You ever, you ever try a fruit like that? I don't know, uh, maybe like a good mango or a nice you know, ripe strawberry or something. And you bite into this and you're just like, man, I want to go into sajda right now. This is so good. It's just the perfect fruit. That's the feeling. And then they're going to start reciting all of the verses like, yeah, I read about this. Oh my God, the roads. Oh my God, there's the river that's floating beneath my feet. There's all the gardens, everything. There's the home that Allah promised. There's the mansion that Allah promised. If I ever donated to help build the masjid, He said He'll give me a house or a mansion in paradise. There it is. It's got my name on it. All of that is فَهُوَ لَقِيهِ They'll meet up to that promise. You know, it's also like, you know, in this world, if you want to give somebody the greatest surprise of their life, like you buy them a new car, a new home, what's the first thing in all the TV shows? What do you see? They wrap their eyes, you know, they put like this thing around their eyes, or you go like this, and you're like, okay, three, two, one, and you open your eyes, and you're like, oh, oh my God, there it is. That's actually what's going to happen to the believer who stayed committed and kept Allah close, permanent, and near to him or her. 
when they see the promises. And you know, one last point is that, um, you know why ayat like this are so important to us? Because the way that Allah advertises Jannah is through words. We don't have pictures of how Jannah will look like. There's no YouTube video we can go on and just, oh my God, I can't wait to get there. We have nothing except the words that Allah described Jannah with. That's what we're trusting the most. And you know, Allah is the best storyteller and He gives us the most detailed and the most beautiful of descriptions because I don't know if this happens to you. I'm sure it does, but it happens to me all the time. Every time I come across a descriptive ayah of anything, whether it be Jannah or the Day of Judgment and even Jahannam, my mind immediately starts to attempt to imagine what that looks like. So when I, when I read a verse about there will be beautiful homes as far as the eyes can see in Jannah, I start imagining that. There will be ghurafat, there will be these massive rooms, the roof would be as far as the eyes can see, the walls will be as far as the eyes can see, and Allah says this is all for you. I start imagining what a room that size would look like. When Allah tells us that you will have jannat, you will have so many spots of land and greenery that belong to you, I start picturing the biggest and most massive piece of land I can think of. Even sometimes I imagine the whole entire earth is just all green. There's no rivers, nothing, because the rivers are floating beneath you, right? So I just imagine this green ball of luscious greenery and that's the entire earth. I'm like, hey, that's the closest thing I can think of of what Jannah would look like. It's so beautiful. The way that Allah describes things, it immediately draws you in and you start imagining it immediately. That's how the Quran talks to you. Listen to this, right, right? When you confront all the promises of Allah, it's going to satisfy you just like how you thought you were satisfied in the worldly life. Only with Allah, look what Allah says. But only on that day, on the day of judgment, it will be presented. Muhdarin, hadir, it will be presented right in front of you. You're just going to be like, oh my gosh, it's right there. There's the fountain, al kawthar that Allah talked about. There's the Prophet, look, he's right there. He's by the kawthar, he's by the fountain. Now I get to go there. Oh my God, there's that waterfall that I read about, that hadith. There's that horse that's running around the tree. There's the tree. All of that stuff, mahdarin, it's right in front of your face. May Allah make us from amongst them. وَيَوْمَ يُنَادِيهِمْ فَيَقُولُ أَيْنَ شُرَكَائِيَ الَّذِينَ كُنْتُمْ تَزْعُمُونَ On that day, they will be called out. Those who transgressed. فَيَقُولُ أَيْنَ شُرَكَ On that day, so Allah gives you a different picture as well. It's not just all going to be, you know, rose. It's, it's not going to be just rosy on the day of judgment. Allah is going to tell you more now. On that day, there's also people that will be told, call out, أَيْنَ شُرَكَ Where are the idols that you associated with? الَّذِينَ كُنْتُمْ تَزْعُمُونَ That you used to claim that this, these were the things that will give you these promises. So where are they today? Then somebody would say and respond who was given the right to speak on that day. Rabbana, oh my master, you see how they started? So Rabbana in worldly life was towards this idol for, the, for him. But now on that day, because the truth is so clear, the reality is just like a slap in the face. They're like, Rabbana, oh my master. These things here, they had misled they had been misled. So they refer to the followers of these idols and he said, these people, they were all misled. Aghwayna, that's one. Aghwaynahum, the one who's speaking said, we're the ones who misled them. Kama ghawayna, here's three. Because we were misled. So three things, they said, oh our master, these idols and those who followed them, they're all misled. Because we misled them. Because we ourselves are misled. These are the, the leaders. These are the people who sold those idols. 
who sold that narrative, who made, who invested millions of dollars and made those commercials. If you drink this water, the holy blah, blah, blah is going to come inside of you and you're going to become rich. Your bank account, you'll log into it. You're like, oh my God, it just multiple, it just multiplied four times over. How'd that happen? Because you drank some water that some dude said was just real blessed and was real good for you. You know, if you, if you bow down to this, all your problems just disappear. You start feeling stuff happening. Just do it, do it, do it. Those same individuals are like, yeah, we're the ones that actually, we misled them because we ourselves have been gone astray. And look, they don't stop there. Tabarratna ilayk. They said we want to disassociate and separate ourselves from that so that we can come ilayk to you. We were never of people that used to worship that stuff. So Allah says, okay, fine. It's, it was said to them, okay, go call them out. If they had nothing to do with you, let's see you talk to them because you, are, you did that at least. So just at least show us how this whole thing worked. Because you were the culprit. You were the one that was selling this stuff to the world. Call them out now. Let's see what happens. This is further humiliation, by the way. For these individuals, Allah is going to embarrass Khizyun. Khizyun is one of the words in the Quran used that this, was, this is going to be a public humiliation for people who sold this stuff. So Allah is going to say, go ahead, call them now. In front of all of mankind, call them out, call whatever their names are, call them out. Let's see, let's see how this worked or how you claimed it worked. So they called out to their idols, but none of them answered. None of them responded. Instead, Allah showed them, there's your punishment over there. Instead, if they only would have pondered and reflect that these things can't guide you in any way, shape or form. On that day, they will be also called out and asked, and Yaqul, what did your prophets and messengers, what did they respond when they were told, okay, these are the idols you worship? How, what did they say? What did they respond with? You became blinded by these prophets that we sent to you. You ignored them. They were trying to warn you, don't worship that stuff. Don't be inclined to those things. Instead, you turned a blind eye from them. Now, they can't be asked for any help. Nothing on this day. It's too late. It's done. See, every time Allah gives you depressing news, there's always hope. As for the one who made tawbah, did you see the connection? We just talked about the consequence of people who worshipped and trusted and depended on or leaned towards anything other than Allah. Like they engrossed their spiritual belief to these things. Allah says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ تَابَ But as for the ones who repented, وَآمَنْ And they renewed their faith. They renewed their intention. You know, like enough is enough. See this idol? Get out of it. I'm done with it. I don't care who gave it to me. I don't care what people believe about it. I'm done with this stuff. And they actually walk the walk. They changed their, life, their lives and they started doing the right thing. Maybe inshallah, hopefully they'll be amongst those who are successful. <laughs> Did you guys catch that? Allah said, Fa'asa. Don't forget this word guys. Fa'asa. Asa. Is, the, is a uh, term that we say in Arabic, it's called fi'l taraji. It's something that represents hope that maybe insha'Allah, I could be successful. Why? Allah is separating two groups of people that do righteous deeds. Listen to it, okay? On the one hand, there are people who do righteous deeds and they do it sincerely because it has an impact on their life. They want to please Allah, so they do it. Then there is a second group of those who do righteous deeds to say and validate themselves. Well, I did it. I prayed. You know, I, I, I gave sadaqah. I did a lot of good things. 
And those are the individuals Allah is, sell, is separating with the word Asa. Because then you don't get to say to yourself, Oh Allah, I did it. What do you, what do you mean I, I'm not going to be successful? I did go to the masjid. Yeah, your body went into the masjid. But your heart was still left at home. It was still in the car. Your heart was like so, so upset. It was so unsatisfied. It was not inclined to this stuff. You just did it because your parents dragged you along. So that's all. You, that's the only reason you went. You only got up for Fajr because you were so annoyed by when mom and dad were raking you up. You're like, oh my God, just leave me. Okay, fine, I'll just pray. Yeah. You only listened to the khutbah because there was nothing else to listen to. Those are the things that Allah is separating. So obviously, the first category is where we want to be. We want to be the people that we don't just do the righteous deeds, but we do it because we want the reward. We want that thirst and desire in our hearts, we want it badly. That's why Allah says, maybe inshallah you'll be amongst those who are successful. Allah can create whatever He wants and He chooses whatever He wants. They will not have any choice on that day. Subhanallah wa ta'ala amma yushrikun. Praise be to Allah. And He is far away from what they associated with. Allah is fully well aware of what you hid to kin no suduruhum what your chests hid inside to kin is like a vault Allah knows what you vaulted inside of your chests the things that you've never told another human being you've never told another human being Allah's pulling it out I know exactly what's inside of you I know exactly how you felt when you heard my message although you smiled you said, oh, alhamdulillah, you used all the beautiful phrases, the beautiful words. I know exactly what you harbored from within. So that still goes against you, subhanAllah. This is so, so frightening. Because I'm sure a lot of people are guilty, guilty with this. And you sit in front of like, you, you go for a Jummah and you sit, you listen to this khatib and you're like, God, I hate this khatib, even though because everything they're saying is totally applies to me. I never want to listen to him again. But then after when the khatib walks by and says, Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah, shaykh, and you give him a hug, but deep tie, you're giving him a hug on the outside, but on the inside, you're like, God, I hate this guy. I can't stand him. Everything he says it applies to me. I don't, even, I don't even want to be around. I'm not going to ask him no questions, nothing. Ah, mashallah, jazakallah khairan, shaykh. See that kind of hypocrisy? That's what Allah is talking about. I know exactly what's in your heart. So don't think, you can fool him. You can't fool Allah. وَهُوَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ He is Allah. No deity worthy of worship but He. لَهُ الْحَمْدُ فِي الْأُولَى وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ He has all praise from the beginning as well as the end. وَلَهُ الْحُكْمُ He has the final say, ruling. وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ And you're eventually going to return right back to Him. SubhanAllah. قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمُ اللَّيْلَ سَرْمَةً إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَنْ إِلَاهٌ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِضِيَاءٍ أَفَلَا تَسْمَعُونَ قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ Say to them, did you see? أَرَأَيْتُمْ guys is when Allah wants you to sit and reflect. So all the students listening to this, please take a moment now when you're listening to this and start reflecting, okay? Just reflect for a second what I'm going to share with you. قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ Don't they sit back and think and ponder. إِنْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمُ اللَّيْلِ If Allah were to make the nights sarmadan ila yawm al permanent sarmada permanent until the day of judgment in other words we never saw the sun rise again okay man ilahun ghayrullahi ya'tikum bidiya'in which deity other than allah would bring you some light some sunshine so what's allah talking about here you know, the transition of night and day, that cycle that we live, the earth has been living upon since the day it was created. Allah is saying, what if I just made it always nighttime? How would you feel about that? You know, Mercury, Mercury the planet Mercury, is the closest planet to the sun. And, it, and as a result, it has some of the most extreme temperatures as well. So it's nights, it's minus in the hundreds, four or five hundred degrees. 
and then its days is literally plus hundreds and hundreds of degrees. But then the length of each day is very different as well. Some planets will have days that will, uh, or one day that will be equivalent to several days of earth time. So Allah is telling you and I, what if I made that entire night permanent? What's the temperature like in the nighttime? It's freezing. It's cool. Imagine how that would affect you and I physically, emotionally, psychologically. You know, we get a t you know what's amazing about this? Ayah? I'll, I'll read the other one and then I'll tell you what's incredible how we have arrived at this area and what's happening. You'll, it, you'll just be like, oh my God, this is, this is just unbelievable. But then Allah says, Afala tasma'un, aren't you listening? قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمُ النَّهَارَ سَرْمَدًا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَنْ إِلَاهٌ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِلَيْلٍ تَسْكُنُونَ فِيهِ أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ Don't you sit there and ponder. If Allah were to take the days and make them permanent, so Allah reversed it now. Before it was the night, now it's the day. إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Until the day of judgment, it's only daytime. It's مَنْ إِلَاهٌ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ Which other deity other than Allah could bring you night, some darkness, so that you can تَسْكُنُونَ فِي So that you can relax and rest in it. أَفَلَا تُبُصِرُونَ Aren't you like looking at this stuff? Aren't you listening? Aren't you paying attention? Aren't you seeing this? That's Allah asking us this. It's like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you people? Don't you see? You know what Allah is teaching us here, guys? The night and day are signs of His existence. Just look up in the sky and that transition. That's it. That, that should remind you of Allah right away. Another lesson here is, we are living in times of COVID, right? We're living in the midst of a pandemic. When lockdown happened, I want to talk about lockdown. I'm talking about like everything shut down and we were in our homes. Didn't it kind of feel like when you're in your home, even though it was beautiful and sunny outside, it was still dark? How did we feel when that happened? Depression rates went through the sky across the globe. People started feeling really angry and upset. Domestic problems skyrocketed because people were just in each other's face. So you had like a bit of shade or darkness that was just too long. It was too much. Then the flip side, those who went outside, you probably did this. I did this. I'd go outside and start riding a bike and walking around for hours just to get out of the house. Take the wife and kids and we just go out there. And before you know it, it's like, oh my God, it's so hot. It was like 40 degrees. The humidity was through the roof. Oh God, we've got to get back inside. It was just too much of that. And then we don't know where to go. We can't walk into a mall. We can't walk into a playground, so an indoor playground. We can't do anything. We can't go in a gym because why? Everything is closed. So you're either always in the sun or you're always in your home. So you're, you felt like you were permanently under the sun or you were permanently under shade. That's exactly what Allah is referring to here. Imagine that went on until the day of judgment. Who else would bring you light and who else would bring you shade? It was like... <laughs> It's like this, these ayat is talking to us directly since we are here in the midst of this pandemic. And it gets even crazier, guys. Can you imagine? We studied over 200 plus videos. We've gone through of different topics. This is the first time we're coming across these ayat. Out of all the tafsirs I've done with you, first time we're coming across these ayat. And look at when Allah brought these ayat to our attention in the midst of the pandemic. So it almost feels like it's talking to us directly. It just got revealed to us, subhanAllah. You know, the timing to me is always a miracle. It's, it, it always amazes me, the timing of how things happen. And when you take the moment and try to connect some of those dots, it just blows your mind. Anyhow, I hope that you guys can appreciate that benefit, inshaAllah. Just a couple more verses and we're done, guys. وَمِنْ رَحْمَتِهِ It's from Allah's Rahmah. جَعَلَ لَكُمُ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ لِتَسْكُنُوا فِيهِ He gave you the night and the day that you can relax in it. So during the day you relax by going to work, seek your rizq, but then you get exhausted. So the night is there for you to rest and relax so you can re-energize and do it again. 
Every single one of us have to, even the Prophet ﷺ, he was told to pray during the night, but he was told, Nisfahu awin qusminhu qalila. So at least half of it or a portion of it, and, and just a little. Why? Because you need to go back and get some rest. Even the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. So we're learning from this that when Allah is talking about night and days, if He made it permanent, etc., is that we also have to balance our relationship with Allah. If you engross yourself 1000% all in Islamic stuff, then you become completely jahil of how to talk to people out there. When you're at a grocery store, you don't know how to communicate with nobody. Everything is just weird to you. So you've got to balance that now. So too much of even a good thing is problematic, right? Allah continues, min tashkurun. That you can also seek His virtues, His blessings. tashkurun. In hopes that you'll be grateful for this guy. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. وَيَوْمَ يُنَادِيهِمْ فَيَقُولُ أَيْنَ شُرَكَائِيَ الَّذِينَ كُنْتُمْ تَزْعُمُونَ Allah said it again. We just came across this ayah in a previous page. On that day Allah will say to them, Where is your deities that you worshipped? Where are these shuraka, these idols that you worshipped? In kuntum tasarun, if that's what you claim, they could do this. You claim that they could even control the night and day. You had a, you had a god for the sun, you had a god for the moon. So where are they today? What did they do? وَنَزَعْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ شَهِيدًا فَقُلْنَا هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ They were stripped from every single ummah, a witness. فَقُلْنَا We said to them, هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ Give me some clear evidences. Show us. Prove to us. فَعَلِمُوا أَنَّ الْحَقَّ لِلَّهِ That's when they realized, man, the real truth is Allah. وَضَلَّ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَفْتَرُونَ And they were so misguided based on all the pathetic lies they used to tell. All those TV shows, all those commercials, all of it was just a bunch of lies because you knew people will pay you, you'd create an entire industry that was a multi-billion dollar industry based on what? So you can lie to everyone. You know, I watched the... It was a while ago I watched, um, I, don't, I, I, don't, I won't say who, but some religious figures of other religions where they had all the luxuries of the world. Even one particular religious leader had his own airport. He had his own airport, his own jets. And when asked, like, why do you need to li live such a high life? He responded that I cannot be mixed with average day-to-day -day people because they're all a bunch of shayateen, they're all a bunch of satans, and I need to continue to do God's work, so I need to be in a place of purity, so I need to have my own plane, I need to land at my own airport, and I need to have my own mansion in every country and state that I step into. At that day, Allah will say, فَعَلِمُوا أَنَّ الْحَقَّ لِلَّهِ You're gonna see who truly, the truth will eventually manifest itself. وَضَلَّ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَفْتَرُونَ And my goodness, you're just going to sit there like, oh my God, those lies, now they're coming back at me. Allah is recording, Allah is monitoring, Allah is watching. You know, um, now the surah, we're coming to an end to the surah, inshallah. I, I'm anticipating we may have just two more episodes and we'll be done the surah. We're going to start to see a shift back to Musa alayhi salam. And some of the things that Musa alayhi salam would have learned and, and gotten throughout his whole journey. You know, one last thing and we're done, guys. There's a, there was a movie that was made in 1956, The Ten Commandments. I'm sure some of you may have heard about this movie. It's a great film. It's about three and a half hours long. But it's an, it's an educational film, which is why I'm, I'm, I'm sharing it with you. You know, you, you can actually gather the family. And my goodness... I just watched this film recently and it, for some bizarre reason I was going through documentaries on Netflix and I just kind of typed in some titles and all of a sudden it showed up as one of the recommendations and I was like wow I remember that movie I watched it since I was a kid The Ten Commandments and um, when you watch this movie although 99% of it the source of that story was from the Bible and other historical books, um, 
you will be sitting there and I promise you, you're just going to be quoting a bunch of verses in your head. The Ten Commandments is all about the story and life of Musa alayhi salam. But it gives you the biblical account of that, uh, of that story. But you will see the connection and it will blow your mind. You're going to see when Musa or Moses meets Allah. What's the first thing Allah says? Moses, Moses. And you're like, فَلَمَّا أَتَاهَا نُودِيَ يَا مُوسَى when, when Musa alayhi salam came up and he clowned Mount Turi Sayna and he heard his name. And that's what's happening in the movie. The first thing Allah tells Musa alayhi salam is to take off what guys? Take off your shoes. The first thing in the movie he tells Moses, take off your shoes because you're in blessed land. And I thought to myself, I'm watching this movie and I'm literally reciting all of Surah Taha. It was just insane. So those of you who haven't watched this movie, watch it. This is the one and only time I'll actually tell you to watch a, a, a particular movie, but it'll just blow your mind. And the reason why I'm telling you to do this is just so that you can appreciate all the verses and stories that we've talked about with Musa alayhi salam. You can at least see it unfold in front of the screen and it'll resonate with you. You'll really appreciate what you've learned through the series. And I'm talking specifically for those students who've been with me since the beginning of Musa alayhi salam, since Surah Taha onwards till the end of Qasas now inshallah. Uh, particularly for you, it will help your knowledge, it would help affirm and keep that knowledge with you, that you can connect certain images with certain ayat, it'll really help it, uh, the knowledge to resonate with you. So please make some time, maybe this weekend, download it, it's all over online, sit with the family and just watch this movie and you're just going to be like, oh my God, I listened to that, I remember when he was talking about this story, I remember that ayah, oh my God, it's in the surah, you're going to be doing this almost every single scene in the entire entire movie it'll just it'll blow your mind may Allah so which will continue to teach us tomorrow be I'll see maybe we'll conclude the surah or we'll take uh, about two more sessions be I already got my next topic ready and set so I can't wait to share that with you jazakumullahu khairan wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh